Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at, um, I was going to say Zotero, but actually mean Obsidian and its native PDF handling. Uh, as you remember a while ago, I talked about leaving Devon Think and wanting to have something that's cross-platform Linux, because I'm actually recording on Fedora 38 today, uh, as I usually am now, working on Fedora only, um, and I wanted a cross-platform um, repository for read later. So I've been kind of you dabbling in Zotero's, Zotero still. But today we're going to look at what Obsidian does. Before we do that, a few ways to support the channel. Number one, become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership. Number two, take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education. Let's dive in. So as you can see here, I've got a PDF uh, over on this side. It's actually out of Zotero. I just dug it out. First thing I'm going to do is copy it, bring it over to Obsidian, and paste. And you can see the title over here is 23, right? 2303-06042. So you can see it right here. So if I actually rename it to, this is uh, frugal computing, done. And it has uh, changed it right in here for me. So how does it do that? What it's done it so far is it's just embedded it, right? This is the um, transclusion link where it shows you it actually includes something. So it's linked to the PDF. But I'm actually added it to my assets because of my settings. So if you go to, oh, what is it? Files and links. Uh, yeah, right here. And so attachment folder path is ZZ assets, ZZ assets. So that's what it does. And you can see it's already opened up and has a nice um, viewer, although I can't actually read it <laughs> at this size. I'm not sure if you can either. Um, but what we can do is go to our three dots menu and we can open a new tab, right? And you can see it there. I have a big new tab of it. Or if I was going to say, um, you know, embed it, and this was the main note here, not my notes for this uh, screencast. And I could also even go open uh, open to write. And then it would open up in split for me so that I could come over here, I could read on one side and take notes on the other side, which is how I would normally do this, right? I'd actually normally have this full screen here, which will unfortunately put some of the Obsidian UI out of <coughs> out of way. But you can see now I could read it over here and take notes over on the left side just fine. Now, if you're a highlighter of PDFs, which I am not, but if you are, I'll grab it out. And if I open it up in, is it open in default app? Uh, document viewer done. This is just the standard um, Linux PDF viewer or in Fedora 38. And I could even grab it and say, let's highlight this, right? Highlight, highlight text. <clears throat> now let's hit save. It's going to ask me, and it's going to save. I'm going to want to save it in the same spot again. So I'm just going to save over top of the old copy, replace it. And you'll see right here, it already loaded it right in for me. So I can even highlight in an alternative application and then have my highlights in here if you want. If that's how you work, this works really well. Now, I know Obsidian, or Obsidian, uh, Devon Think actually had that built right in. I didn't need an external application over here. Uh, I don't actually care about that because I do not um, highlight my PDFs really. I just take notes on them. I don't really worry about it. The other thing that you can look at if you really want to do uh, annotations, so we open up Obsidian Annotator. Right there. So this is another uh, plugin for Obsidian that lets you annotate your PDFs in line, like right in Obsidian. But it's got some caveats to it. And one of the caveats is that if you uh, change your annotations, you can see right here in the caveat section, right? Plugin doesn't work under iOS 16.3 and higher. So I do use my iPad a bit still, and that doesn't work for me. And the reader doesn't show notations if they're changed on different platforms. So if I made an update here on my Fedora machine, and then I, you know, actually it's just beside me. If I use my Mac right now after that to make another notation, then it wouldn't work. And that honestly just doesn't work for me. I need my uh, solutions to be cross-platform. I need, um, I would prefer if it's also iOS ready and this isn't. So then I just can't use this one. Uh, and it's got some data view queries and it's got some other stuff. So I don't think that's a viable option, but for me, for how I use PDFs, I think that the built-in version of PDFs in Obsidian is actually fine. If I can just embed it, I could read it, I could take notes on it right there, and I'd have the, my copy of the PDF. So that means that I could even take a step closer to uh, abandoning uh, Zotero, just having everything in Obsidian, having like a two-read inbox, which would be good. Uh, and then everything would move off to, uh, I guess, red. Uh, and I have my sources, so I've showed you this before. So I think, although we're still kind of, you know, sussing this out. Usually I'd have, uh, say, an inbox here, which is varying degrees of clean. Uh, so here I can do this. This would be a source. So actually go under books. Uh, book. I'll have to do that later. 
uh, data, or sorry, that's why I'm doing it. I want to go to move book sources books. That's what that is. All right, next OS. That's a tag, really. So I'll go uh, tag. Not a tag note. I've got a big bunch of stuff on it, but it'll be a tag note. I've showed this before, so I'd move those off. And these are probably just uh, dead folders that I don't need because I was messing around with them. They're dead files. So then I have my sources. So this is uh, again for my notes, right? These are my notes on different sources in here. Uh, I have it split up into books and all other sources really at this moment. I don't have any other sources besides books. The reason I do that is so that books have their own uh, ability to query. So I'm looking for something with a folder of book when I do other stuff like my dashboard uh, or uh, I'm working on actually having better library tracking with Tracker. So I have like graphs of everything I've read and have everything for myself. So I think if I was gonna do this, I would have like a to read list uh, and then from there, I'd have, I just file them. I'd archive them once they've been archived. I wouldn't do much more than that. I keep the original sources, so the PDFs is there. And then I would keep my notes, again, in my sources folder on their own. That's really it. If you like this video, if you have other ideas on how you would use PDF uh, natively in Obsidian, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you've got other things going on, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd love to hear about other things you'd like to hear me talk about with making knowledge, Obsidian, stuff like that. Love to hear about it. Support me. Take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education, but better yet, become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership. Members, I'm almost done getting all of my book notes ready for you or getting the system set up so that I can start entering all my book notes. So you'll be getting, members will be getting my raw book notes as they come out. So as I read a book and as I go back into my library of all my reading, you will be getting access to the raw notes if you want them along with a summary. And everyone will actually get the summary a little bit and have uh, some you know information on the books that I have read because I know people have been interested in that. Have an awesome day.